All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today, I guess this is more or less an update of a little, I guess, small series of videos I've made here on the channel covering this specific topic, but it's actually good news. It's something that I feel like the United States not only needed to hear, but needed to see. You know, I, I feel like, well, I don't even feel like, it's just evident from everything that's happened. But over the last few decades, here in the United States, we have consistently pushed manufacturing into like offshore status, right? We, we send all of our manufacturing jobs and we make everything in other countries like Eastern Asia and stuff. And then we import it back here and everything, right? And that's been like a major contention point for a lot of like political debate for a while now. But in one of the most critical industries on the planet right now, the United States just took a pretty massive W and it's about time man. it's about time we finally see the government kind of do something right and do something that's going to benefit a widespread amount of people and also put the United States in a much more competitive spot I feel like a lot of people have lost faith in the government and lost faith in a lot of good things happening here in our country but this is genuinely some of the best news that we could possibly have right now so if you don't remember uh, there was basically uh, a video or two that I made about something called the chips act now what this was is essentially it was federal subsidizing for the semiconductor industry here in the United States that would pour so much money, like just a ridiculous amount of money, billions of dollars into investment to actually start building and manufacturing microchips like that back here in the United States instead of importing them from places like Taiwan. If you didn't know, semiconductors are some of the most important industries on the planet, you know? Virtually everything that makes the planet run right now is based off of these semiconductors. These little small computer chips inside of everything from washers and dryers to your car, to fire fighter jets, to medical equipment, to banking equipment, to your smartphone, to pretty much everything that we need to survive our new technologically driven daily lives. And for years now, the United States has been in a position where we've been importing these semiconductor chips, like I said, primarily from places like Asia, in the hopes of making them cheaper and basically getting a deal on them. Now, the only problem with that is, due to outside forces, the supply chain of these critical pieces of infrastructure can be tampered with by foreign powers if need be. For instance, China and the United States, a lot of people don't know, are kind of in like this bidding war, basically, to try and take control of the semiconductor industry. Whichever one comes out on top can kind of like dominate, I guess, some of the global political clout scene, I guess, in the semiconductor industry. And obviously, for the United States, we don't want China to be able to actually control a significant portion of the semiconductor supply globally. So, what is the best answer to the question, you know, when you're trying to basically protect yourself in this situation? Well, it's to start making the shit at home again. And thankfully, that's what the United States has started to pivot to. So the CHIPS Act was something I discussed that was basically, for a long time, kind of gridlocked in government, right? The funding hadn't been actually secured or anything, the, the bill hadn't been voted on and passed, but all that finally happened, and it actually led to the official groundbreaking ceremony of Intel's brand new $20 billion semiconductor plant here in the state of Ohio. This $20 billion semiconductor plant will feature eight total plants if the plans fully uh, map out the way that they're supposed to. $20 billion, I believe, is the largest financial investment in Ohio history. And I believe also that number could be multiplied to potentially like $100 billion if everything were to fall into place correctly over the next few years. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But overall, this is actually a pretty important step forward. Not only is the ground officially broke, meaning that the facility is finally being built now that the CHIPS Act has been passed, but it looks like this plant, and if the United States continues with this mindset and continues to start bringing the semiconductor industry back here to the states, it could actually lead to a mentality shift where the United States could reassert itself globally as one of the major technology manufacturers where semiconductors like this come into play. So, President Biden on Friday celebrated the start of construction of a $20 billion project that aims to reassert the United States as a major technology manufacturer after decades of offshoring with the building of two giant semiconductor factories that could deliver thousands of jobs in the coming years. The Intel manufacturing facility taking shape on a verdant plot of land outside Columbus is one of the most expensive and consequential investments in the United States in recent years, one offering enormous, enormous possible benefits for the economy, but also facing considerable challenges 
challenges to reach fruition. Billions of dollars of federal subsidies approved in newly signed law convinced California headquartered Intel to proceed with the project, which aims to dramatically boost domestic manufacturing of the tiny components that power all modern electronics from laptops to fighter jets. But ramping up the vast manufacturing zone will take major effort, including consistent years-long investment in the face of potential recessions and fickle Wall Street investors and the training of thousands of engineers and technical workers amid a labor shortage. So the fact of the matter is, this is an incredible development, not only for the state of Ohio here, but also for the United States in general. For the state of Ohio, the $20 billion investment not only is going to create thousands of full-time jobs, including over 7,000 construction jobs and 3,000 Intel jobs and supporting tens of thousands of jobs throughout the economy nationally, but also it puts the United States in a much better position where hopefully over the coming years, we will decide that we don't wanna be reliant on foreign powers to actually provide us with microchips like this and semiconductors that we need. You have to think, pretty much everything runs off the back of these things now. So much of our military technology, so much of the technology that powers our economy and our daily lives at home, basically runs on the back of these things. And manufacturing them here is the best way possible to ensure that not only we never have a shortage of them, but also we don't have to work around everyone else's needs. So by putting ourselves in a better position in this industry, not only will that boost our defense possibilities by not having to worry about a shortage of these, but it also could make life here in the United States a lot easier overall. On top of this, the average salary at the Intel plant in Ohio is determined to be somewhere around $130,000, which is significantly higher than the average salary here in the United States. So they're gonna also be paying well for people who work at this plant. This is truly a wonderful opportunity for thousands of Ohioans and it's one I think that the United States needed. Like for my entire life, basically, we've been hearing about how the U.S. is just like poised to be, you know, dependent on all these other countries. We're poised to be dependent on the rest of the world for all these important and critical things. And thankfully now we're finally, it seems like getting a little sense in our head where we're getting to that point where we're like, hey, do we really want to rely on the complex geopolitical situation in the world right now when it comes to something so critical? Now, of course, the celebration isn't to come yet. Yes, they did break ground on this. Yes, there are other developments and talks right now for the United States to boost our semiconductor processing capabilities, but at the same time, it's going to take years of effort. I mean, they're talking about a recession coming up. As you guys know, economic stability is probably not what we're strongest with right now. And things like that, complex situations like this. So we'll have to see how that works out, see how we kind of play our way through that. And also at the same time, is this just kind of like a fad for the United States, right? Is this just something that we suddenly got into that we're not going to actually keep interest in? Hopefully not. Hopefully we are continued to be interested in actually producing our own semiconductors and whatnot, but I mean, if the funding and the support's not there, then I mean, you know how the government is, you know? It already took them long enough to pass the CHIPS Act, even though this was pretty much a crucial bill, I feel like, for the United States, so it definitely is up in question right now whether or not we'll actually see the government continue to support initiatives like this, but hopefully that's the case, because this is a massive win for the United States, and not even just for the United States, for local Ohioans as well. Overall, I'm really excited about the news. I think it's a good thing and hopefully it continues and hopefully the United States continues this mentality of actually doing it ourselves. So with that being said though, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel, follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus. Make sure to check out Shoptimus down below. And until my next video guys, this is Optimus while talking about the new Intel plant and signing out.